Hi, everyone. It's Michelle Hill, your legacy builder at Winning Proof. And I am coming to you with another episode of Winning Proof Unscripted. And I'm super excited today. Many of you, most of you have seen the post that I've done for Allison O'Shea's book, Openly Aging, Four Pillars to Keep Control of Your Aging Journey. Is that the best cover or what? Or <laughs> just the best cover? So... I want to introduce Allison. She is an aging advisor. I call her an expert. She is an expert, but her title is aging advisor. So Allison, welcome and is glad to be here today with you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here too. And thank you, Michelle, for all your help during that process of writing Openly Aging. I definitely appreciated it. That's what wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so and I'm ready to start a new one in October. So be ready. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. fall too. That's yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. But for today, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your background? And I told you before we went on that I used to read bios and I found it much more natural to just mm -hmm. have the author or the guest introduce himself. So why don't you tell everybody sure. how you came about to be an aging advisor? Sounds good. So yes. Um, so I actually spent 20 years as an executive in senior living. I started out in programming, so doing activities, and then quickly grew um, into the executive director role. And after 20 years of doing that position, you know, COVID was very challenging. And it, like many people during that time, I thought, what could I be doing that really fills more of my soul? And that's where I came up with Openly Aging, because what I found was so many people came into needing to need more support, totally uneducated, didn't understand how much things cost. And really, it was a crisis situation. And I feel very strongly that if we get ahead of our aging journey, really understand what potentially could happen. We can not only avoid crisis, but I truly believe that we can avoid a lot of the extended or dramatic care that sometimes people need because we're kind of staying ahead of any issues. So the book, The Four Pillars, they actually were designed and developed because every time in the thousands of aging journeys I saw throughout my career, and even to this day as an aging advisor, Every single time I helped a family or an aging individual through a crisis, the crisis absolutely fit into one of those four pillars. Um, something was amiss within the pillar. Something wasn't working anymore. And we had to really kind of figure out how to get it back on track. But a lot of times it was extra money was having to be spent or time, energy, and chaos. And so that's what the goal is with the four pillars. Okay, and that and they're laid out very succinctly in the book. And as you can see, it's an easy read. It's not a yes. thick book, but it was meant to be an easy read, not a big thick manual that you intend to get to someday, but you never do. And then you end up in a crisis situation. So from since I am in your probably your target market age range, I want to ask for all the people out there, which I know are thousands of them. What happens when like, I'm healthy, I feel healthy, nothing's wrong with me. And you're, you know, it's addressing the elephant in the room. At what point do people really need to start talking about it? And who's the who are the first people they should approach? Great question, because that I always get this question, what age should I start? And that's, you know, obviously a loaded question because everybody's yes. health is, you know, different. But truly the whole point of the book and the whole idea of the pillars is there's not, you know, you're not going to walk away with a written out, you know, blueprint. I mean, you're going to be thoughtful about it. And that's the whole goal is that it makes you think. So all it is is saying, okay, Wow, you know, one day I may need support from somebody as simple as picking up medication, taking me to doctor's appointments. Who can I identify in the, as my support system? Who will that person be? And so it's just almost putting a check bar, check mark by, wow, I've thought about it. 
I'm going to go talk to them so they understand that this is what my goals are. And also, I'm going to make sure all my documents and everything reflects this decision. So it's not, you know, people are like, oh, how do I plan for aging when it's so unpredictable? Predictable, And that's absolutely correct. But there are, and after you read the book, you'll see there are so many things that you just can be thinking about. You know, does the home I live in currently make sense? Or is it the home that I raised my children in and it's 3,500 square feet, the bedroom, the master bedroom, uh, primary uh, bedroom is upstairs. Yeah. Does that really make sense to, you know, age in? But it doesn't mean you have to move tomorrow. It just means, you know, you're being more realistic about what your options are. And that's the goal is I've seen so many aging individuals in my career so angry, mad. They've had somebody else that has to come in and all of a sudden make these big decisions. So they lose, lose all of their independence, but the autonomy to make their decisions. And it was all based because they didn't think about these things before and they were unrealistic about their current situation. So I just want people to be more self-aware and more realistic about what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Yeah, and that makes complete sense, what yeah. you said. And- I know, I mean, I have a, a cousin in Texas who have who has her and her husband have t- 12 kids. I hope I got that number right. 12 and most, you know, of many adopted, but they have people around them, grown kids that they can go to. What about somebody who is on their own and mm-hmm. doesn't have a huge support system, maybe living across the country from mm-hmm. family yeah. and they... You know, it's terrifying sometimes to think about that. Who would be here? What do you say to that person in that situation? Because I know there's a lot of solo agers now. Solo aging is a big hot topic right now. And I, um, it's, and so number one, that's good because that means there's a lot of resources for solo agers. So you type in solo aging and there are a lot of resources. Um, But Though that is the exact person who really needs to go through the four pillars and just help because there are professional support systems that you could have, but how do you use them? I dive into that in the book, you know, um, using them sooner than later is important. Creating a social network, you know, that's really important of other solo agers. And that's going to, once again, that's going to be a hot topic. You search solo aging in your area, there's probably a group already formed. So you each have each other's back. Um, from a high level standpoint, you know, having an aging advisor who can, even if you meet with them once a year or every six months, it's just somebody that is, account- you're being held accountable <laughs> to what, re- what aging realistically looks like. And this is a person that can just help be there as that person. Um, but yes, you know, in those emergency situations, while you're independent, you know, you should be fine. And then calling, even if your support system is not local, letting them know what's going on. But just having the idea that eventually that might not be as successful as it is now. And so that's the idea is it doesn't mean tomorrow you got to go hire a care manager. That's not what that means. It just means you are thinking, hmm, that might be a service in the future that makes sense for me. Let me educate myself now let me put some triggers in place that identify when it's time for me to call, you know, or start using that service. So it's, it goes back to just that self-awareness because, and realizing you're a solo ager, I think that's half the battle. You know, so many people don't even realize they're that. <laughs> so let's start there. You know, if you can't yeah. identify a support system local to you and you're not moving to wherever that support system is, you're going to be what's considered a solo ager and that's okay. But just know that. So you can actively look for resources regarding that. Yeah, that's great. And what I got with, you know, helping with the book and knowing the manuscript and everything was that the plan is crucial. Having a plan is crucial. So why are so many people not wanting to address the elephant in the room. Why are so many people avoiding it like the plague? It's interesting. It's like everyone's watched their aging loved ones age, but like for whatever reason, we don't think it's happening to us. I don't know if that's like something that's in our brains to protect our psyche. I have no idea, but you're absolutely correct. 
there. We definitely have a block when it comes to our own aging or we're just not, you know, and, and here's the way I look at it is to undo that block and to actually be self-aware of our aging will actually keep us aging slower. You know, it's kind of amazing. It's like once like you open a door to say, okay, here's what my options are out here. And I could potentially have that. It actually makes you age slower because you're living in more of an appropriate situation because you're aware of what's going to happen. So that's really what I think the key is. But um, I also do think we're getting to a point in our society where there is going to be this next generation of aging individuals, you you know, yourself included, who maybe have been a little traumatized by their parents' lack of planning and how you and how you had to come in and kind of save them because they didn't want to talk about it. And then you had to deal with these like them being so mad at you and you had to make big decisions. So I am hoping that we are kind of turning a curve on this, you know, sh shaming. We, you know, it's shameful to get older. It, I don't want to talk about it. We're we can actually just be a little bit more open, which will make people want to talk about it and look at it in a different light. So that is my goal. And I do see that trend happening um, because many people in your age group were very traumatized by uh, aging parents and what actually happened. Yes, and, yes. And, and the resources available today versus 20 years ago yes. is so different. The aging industry is blowing up because 85 and older is the fastest growing age group in wow. of all age groups. <laughs> wow. And that is a fact. And so we're going to be living longer. We're going to be so, um, so anyway, so yes, I hope people are a little more yeah. proactive. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I think the, you know, I said, I'm the, on the tail end of the boomer generation. And so we're, I think we are for the most part, more independent. And mm -hmm. we're, we're like, I'm going to do this myself and I don't need anybody and I can be self-reliant until we aren't. Right. And, that's the <laughs> and then we're caught just like a deer in headlights. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What, you know, and everybody is scrambling. Thus what you said, when they came to you, they were in crisis mode. And, and you know, you I know. also look at that too, as that's a, if you let yourself not be prepared and you're doing fine, you're trucking along, you're, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden a crisis happens. That's actually a dignity issue for me. I feel like you've now allowed yourself all this hard work of being independent, all this hard work of doing it on your own for one crisis to take all that away. I just hate that. And I think if people were more plan, planful and had a plan, it eliminates that whole time where maybe we're looked at, you know, as somebody who's in a crisis and that's not a good place to be. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. if somebody is aging, no matter what age, we're that all is, aging, we're all aging. <laughs> yep. Babies are aging. We're all, uh -huh. aging. we're older than we were when we started this conversation. That's a fact. Exactly. <laughs> so when you want to, when a person wants to approach a family member, say, I wanted to approach a, a child of mine, a grown child, what's the best way that somebody can approach? Is there a special language or a special way instead of like, hey, I want to talk about my funeral. I want yeah. to talk about, you know, home and aging yeah. you know, care and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that correctly, but you know, okay. if we want to talk to somebody about that, is there a good way to approach that rather than, and, um, and then, uh, well, what, you know, <laughs> like that, like we're so hesitant. Yeah. Do, is there, have you found, is there a, a special way of approaching the conversation? So I think you, you know, I get this question a lot and I get it from both sides. I get from adult children that are saying I, cause I do also help uh, a lot of my clients are adult children that mm -hmm. are wanting to best support mom and dad and just don't know where to start. And then I get it from, you know, the aging individual side where, yeah, how do I start that? So I think the first step and actually, and if you think about what you said, the things you said were the most dramatic funeral home. <laughs> Yes, have, gonna, that's you know, where our mind goes. I know. So I would say the first step is let's kind of get, take out the doom and the gloom and the, you know, the worst case scenario talk. And let's just talk about, hey, 
you know, I want you to know I I have chosen you as my trusted support system. I just want you to know that I'm in a journey right now and I am trying to stay ahead of it. And I want to make sure you know that my goal as your mother, as your aunt, as your close friend, that I never want to put you in a situation where you're uncomfortable or you have to make big decisions for me. And that's my goal. I don't know where this journey will take me. I don't know. But what I do know is that I want you to know that I'm being thoughtful about it. That's step one. And then I always tell people, start with the foundation. And truly the foundation is documents, hmm. finances. So if you're choosing this person that could potentially one day have to make very big life decisions for you, this should also be somebody that you can say, hey, I've got tons of money. I'm good. Or, hey, I have, you know, I'm a little concerned about money. Here's what I have. Here's who I've talked to, to identify where I should be, you know, making sure that I have all my things in place. And so truly the way I look at it is you should just be updating them. Not so much asking them to jump on board because right now you're independent, you're young, you know, in my world, you're young, you're, yeah. you know, and so there's no reason for any involvement. So right now it's really like, hey, I just want you to know I'm on this journey my goal is this. I'm identifying what my long-term goals are. I'm going to stay home, whatever, whatever. But I just want you to know. And I may come to you with snippets of information that I feel like you should know just because I have learned that they are important in my aging journey. And so take it from the doom and gloom, the work, because my goal is if we're doing this today, that doom and gloom hopefully is not as doomy and gloomy. <laughs> being forced into a home, quote unquote, you know, like, yes. you know, <laughs> and where to things. spread my ashes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it is important. So that is kind of on the front end, but you can do it in more of a celebratory feeling way yeah. and not, oh my God, it's, I've talked about my funeral. So that's the point is I want to change the idea of the, the, the shame and the negativeness because aging is universal. We can't stop it. We've briefly mentioned that. Um, but our aging journey is 100% unique to us. And so it we need to just be a little bit more um, content with it. Yes, absolutely. I love what you said. And I love that answer to the approach very nicely <laughs> instead of the, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like you this have someday. To put me in a home, put me there, I guess. You know, no. <laughs> the goal is to get me out of that home. That's the goal. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So when so a follow up question to what you your answer is, should an aging individual when they're approaching their family member or, you know, a potential partner in this aging journey, should they have already done some of their homework from what I understand you said, they yeah. should come with tools already. I've checked this out, A, B, C and D. Absolutely. Yes, I, I think it's our responsibility as the aging person. So I talk in the book, I have a section on ageism. And the yes. reason I feel that that's so important to mention is, and truly, if you read the book, you'll get, it's this idea that ageism is for everybody else to be not ageist. That's how our society educates people yeah. on it. That's where all the, you know, here's how not to be ageist. Well, what we as aging people need to also maintain our dignity, maintain our independence, but also don't look like weak people because we're in denial. Like let's yes. pull your bootstraps up and say, okay, I'm aging, but I'm going to do this in the best way possible in the most control. And so that is what the idea is, is that yes, this is your aging journey. This isn't your child's aging journey. Yes. They will be there through your journey you know, to help support when needed, but this is your journey. And so, yes, you need to go into those conversations with a little homework done um, and just to let them know, you know. And then I, I do hear quite often, oh, my, da my daughter, every time I bring it up, she doesn't want to talk about it. Well, because if you're bringing up the doom and gloom and funeral, yeah, they don't want to talk about it. But if you're bringing up, hey, I've been really thoughtful. The home I'm living in doesn't really make sense. I'm fine for now. But just so you know, there's probably going to come a time where I want to downsize. And here's what I've thought about what that looks like for me. And that is just that energy is just a, such a different conversation. It is. And I think yeah. it comes from the approach of here. I want you to help me not rescue me. 
And yes. I think that's the main message is that you're not looking for people to rescue no. you out of a crisis situation. Or I want you the, to support the decisions you know. I'm making as I'm older, yeah. but I also yeah. want you to know they're coming from an educated place. Yes. They're not coming out of blue, thin air. I've read a book. I've talked to somebody, you know, I'm, I'm being thoughtful about this. And I think no, every, any person you approach with that kind in business and personal anyway, when you have that approach, it's always going to be a great way to start a conversation. Yes. Yeah. So the AG need to pull up yes. their big girl pants, pull up their big boy pants. Yes. And do the work. Do the work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Which which your book lays out. And that's mm -hmm. what you do for people. So if people want to, and we'll talk about this, you know, mm -hmm. in a few minutes, but that's what you help people with is the four pillars and connecting them with resources and giving them guidance and being a, I'll say an aging advisor. I, I'll call it a counselor, but yeah. an, an yeah. advisor, you're advising them on yeah. a successful mm -hmm. aging journey. Yep. And that's exactly, it. you know, I witnessed so many uneducated consumers in the space. You know, how many times when I worked in senior living, did my sales team get a call, you know, and this was assisted living. Is it, do you take United Healthcare? And if you think this is covered by insurance, then when I'm about to tell you it's $9,000 a month, you are really behind the ball and mom is being discharged from rehab tomorrow, you know? And so it, we are just, we we're waiting to get educated until we have a crisis and that's not the time. So it's, we need to be educated while we're independent. We understand what our options are. We understand what our specific situation is and how it relates to those options. Yes. That's really important to be educated consumers. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. in today's day and age, before we buy anything, I, I mean, for me personally, and I think a lot of people, we look at the reviews, mm -hmm. we do our homework, we make sure we're buying the best product for us. And I think the same goes before you, you know, you need to enlist. What are you enlisting in? What right. are you, you know, just find out what the business model work. Why does it cost what it costs? Mm -hmm. How to get the most out of it? And as a consumer, what can you expect? And what is something that this product or service will not provide you? So you don't go in thinking you're getting more than what they're able to give. Yes. And truly, you know, a lot of senior resource company services really like my service as well, because they want educated consumers. It doesn't feel good when you've had a consumer who made this big decision when they're in a crisis, overwhelmed, emotional, and then all of a sudden, you know, the dust settles and they have the service in place. And because they did it in such a foggy time, yep. they look back now and they're like, this is not what I needed, or this isn't what I expected. And then even if the best salesperson in the world explained it to a T, now they're not happy with the company. The company's trying to make it better. And it's just this, it, it doesn't, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the consumer. It doesn't help the business who's trying to provide a service. So having the education, I just feel is one of the most important things we can do. Yeah, absolutely. And you do such a great job in this book. Thank I'm you. not trying to push the book, but I kind of <laughs> am because <laughs> I know what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Yes, I'm so I'm so sold on it. And what I want to do for myself is just sit down and read it mm -hmm. as a consumer and not as a book and publishing consultant. I just yeah. want to sit down, put a bookmark, you know, yeah. like a real bookmark in it and just sit down and read it and, and have those it. aha moments. Of, yeah. Ooh, I need to do this. So yeah. I want to read a short uh, quote from your book. And let me find it and then have you comment on it. So in chapter three, you say, you ask the question, so how do we keep control of our aging journey? And you say, it starts with our mindset. No one wants to think about getting older. And sometimes the choices we must make are ones we never thought we would be choosing. So for those people who are caught as a deer in headlights and they find themselves in crisis situations, is that when they 
come to you? Do you get clients in that or do you get more of the, hey, I want to do it ahead of time before the wheels fall off? Or do you? So, do yes. Great question. So I have two thoughts kind of going back to the passage. One of where that real passage came from and the idea of it um, when I was in senior living again, I we used to coach our sales teams that no one is going out looking for senior living on a Saturday. They're like, yes, oh, let's just go tour a commute. No, something <laughs> happened. And even if it wasn't a crisis, something made that family say, you know, oh, we should probably get a little more education on this. So that's what that quote is really about is. Yes. We, us thinking about aging is not something we want to do. <laughs> us thinking yes. about our time in a vulnerable state is not enjoyable and it's not something we want to do. But in order to be successful at aging, we have to. And so that's really where that came from. Now, yes, have I, I have worked with, clients in crisis, but as my um, advisory firm has evolved and what my ultimate goal is, as you know, through the book is I'm really, my, my ideal client is, as I'd say, they're at the train depot. They are at the beginning of the tracks. They are on their way to aging and they just want kind of to make sure they have the foundation set. And then from there, I meet with clients depending on their situation yearly, uh, every six months, quarterly, um, just to make sure they're kind of staying, they're on the track, but just making sure as the track starts having options, <laughs> they understand what those options mean for them. Um, uh, many times I do get introduced to families. That's when the adult children come to me is maybe there's a crisis that is occurring and I can definitely get them organized and help them um, package it and make sure they're strategizing about what options they have for sure. But the ultimate goal is that I will be serving clients that are just really wanting to be pro proactive. I, I'm, I'm trying to make a whole um, movement <laughs> if yes. you will, in this idea of like, stop with the, I think if I, the more crisis I manage, the more I'm not supporting what I'm trying to ultimately do. Mm -hmm. um, well, is here, not yet. Here. Yes. If we're always saved in a crisis during this aging journey as a society, we're never going to learn that that's not, we need to get to the other, you know, we need to get ahead of it. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so that's my ideal is somebody who's just, and maybe they've experienced a few aging things that's made them start oof, realizing. Yeah. So for some people that feels like a crisis, it is not a crisis. I can guarantee you that. But for some people, as they're starting to have more, maybe a new diagnosis, um, anybody that has a new neurological diagnosis, that's a time to consult an aging advisor because you have a path ahead of you that you need to be educated on. And any cognitive, any new cognitive diagnosis, I always tell families that is the perfect time to sit and start getting your ducks in a row and just knowing what is ahead of you. And then anyone else who wants to be really proactive, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And can you share a generic story with pretend names of somebody that you have helped that had a really successful outcome? You have the, the book is riddled with really good stories of people you have worked with. So can you share one without, you know, yeah. anonymity that can show people, yeah, this stuff really works. Yes. Um, so I have two kind of short ones that I think will give the gamut of kind of both sides. So I had a client and she and her husband were living successfully on their own, still living, but he had a heart attack and he wasn't bouncing back as well. And they did live in a rather large home. And so my goal with her was we talked through, she didn't know if she should leave, you know, her house and them. But the heart attack happened in December. They really had all of their pillars were in order. But what I was able to do with her was we identified her red flags. So her red flags are going to be the size of the home. It's going to come up eventually. And slowly but surely, she was becoming a caregiver for her husband. And so that, it wasn't dramatic yet. It wasn't uprooting her life. But we were able to leave the conversation, this the first conversation we had, saying, okay, here are red flags. And so her and I meet every six months and she's now having to bring in support for the husband. And so we've been able to do that in a slow process 
few hours a day. And I'm able to educate her on what that means. But she's moving into this new phase of life in an organized and she feels less overwhelmed and she just feels like somebody has their her back and that she can be honest about. And then, you know, it may come up within the next year that, yes, the house, it's time. It's time to start looking at our options. Mm -hmm. But she is prepared for that because every time we talk, we have a conversation. How is it going? How's the expenses of it? You know, um, and so the goal is, is that we're, it's, a, we're just moving down the track, slow and steady, but organized. I had another family where the adult children contacted me. Mom and dad lived in a house. They really were starting to struggle. They lived too far away from the kids, but they didn't know what their options are, what they could afford because finances were very tight. Um, I was able to guide them on their options for, they needed to move out of the house. They needed the equity. They needed to sock that equity away for cash but they were also ready for a more community living because they were lonely and they weren't getting their social engagement pillar number four, you know, and it was getting harder and harder to get to the daughter. She was 45 minutes away. So the whole family, we had a conversation and they understood. And then I educated them on the different levels of care and they made a decision that it was time to move into just a senior apartment, not an assisted living. They didn't need all that, but They've been able to now get the resources they need as they age. And we check, I check in with them every three months. We just have a sit down conversation with the whole family and just mom and dad included. They're big, they're the biggest part of it. And we just talk about, but once again, it's the idea of we're staying ahead where if they had stayed in that house and never talked to me, a crisis would have happened. They would have needed a higher level of care that they can't afford. So we have to keep them in an independent living situation as long as possible from a money standpoint. And so that's what I'm strategizing with them is how do we do that? Okay. So I hope those are two good examples. Yes, ab absolutely. And what would you tell somebody watching this right now? And they're like, I don't know, it kind of makes me uncomfortable, like we talked about before. <laughs> and yes. I don't know. And they're kind of wishy-washy and they don't think they're ready what would you tell them if they happen to stumble upon this and they're, it kind of piques their interest? What is the one thing you would tell them they need to do? They're not ready to talk to somebody like myself is definitely read my book because I think just reading the book will at least give them the thing. Truly, I want to be thought provoking. That is, if I could say one word, that it describes what I want people to leave conversations with me or from my book, I want it to be thought provoking. I want you to walk away thinking, okay, for my unique situation, because aging is universal, but our aging journey is 100% unique to us. For my unique situation, this makes the most sense. Or, wow, I don't really know what my option would be there. I need to dive into that and get myself educated. So yes. the the... I want them to be self-aware and just try to get an education. If they feel like talking to somebody is their best route. What I love about my service and what I've, I've created aging advisor. No one knows yet. It is, <laughs> it is a new thing that I have created. Um, and so how my service works is once you meet with me and we do initial evaluation, and that's just me getting to know your full story, you call on me when you want to. So it could be, like I said, periodically, or it could be just when you feel the need to talk. Maybe you read my book, we met, and then you figured out from your support system, because of your situation, you need to go down this route. Yeah. But you want someone to talk it through with, and you want to make sure you didn't miss anything. That's how. So it's okay to get professional hope, professional support while you're working through this. But if not, the book is a great guide. I mean, that's what I designed it for. It is. Mm -hmm. Completely. It is. <laughs> and and I am intimately and in, you know, know what the the yeah. content is. And I can say that definitely it is a guide. It's thought provoking. It makes you think, huh, I never thought about that. And yeah. I think that's your goal. Yeah. In writing it. And what I want to ask too is you do some speaking I do. as well. So yes. if somebody out there is watching this and they are with a, a company, who what companies do you speak 
to or at that would be the most helpful for this right. message? Yeah. So I do a lot of speaking. So some audiences are for the aging individual. So I've spoken at some um, large forums, educational forums for aging, retired people that are, you know, do classes and stuff. Um, I've done it at big um, adult uh, living, like 55 plus communities, like the Dell Webs and stuff. If I speak to a company, which I love, and I've done that, is my focus is more on the aging child, the uh, um, adult child, because okay. as many companies know, most of their associates are going to have some sort of person that they're the support system for, a parent, whatever, they may not be local, but it can really affect productivity at work, and it can really affect unexcused absences. You know, if that crisis happens, all of a sudden they're out of work for two weeks while they figure out where to move mom. You know, I've seen it over and over and over again. Yeah. And so I speak to that adult child to say, all right, let's start these conversations now before you're the active support system. So you can help mom and dad or aunt, uncle, whoever move through the aging journey as organized as possible. So that is, so from a company standpoint, it's beneficial because you're going to have associates who are going to be support systems regardless but they're going to be more organized and be able to do it in a way where it's not going to disrupt their personal life, their work life. Yeah. So that, that's the angles of my talking. Okay. Yeah. And that's great. So you heard it, people. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Based on what you just said, I know I asked you about a parent coming and having that conversation, but that brought up how mm -hmm. does an child. adult child approach a parent when the parent is completely uneducated in this realm. Don't think that, what are you talking about me? I'm young. I'm, you know, and they're kind of defensive about it. What's the best way for an adult child to approach their parent about this issue? Yeah. Cause it does it absolutely goes both ways. I said it's harder. Say, it is harder. It is harder because it depends on that parent and it depends on that relationship. Yes. So family dynamics are a big part of what I do too. I help with these family dynamics that can be challenging yeah. um, because you're always the mom. It's always your daughter, even if roles have physically reversed. It's just that whole family. But we basically, it's the same idea as I talked about the opposite way. It's just keeping it light. It's keeping it positive. It's keeping it supportive. Like, hey, mom, I heard about this book and I don't know, you know, Mike, I want you to be live long and healthy and independent. And I just, I really took some notes from it. You know, what, could we talk about it? So I have a lot of people that tell me, oh, they're going to give this gift, you know, this book to their parent for Christmas or their birthday. And I always say, that's great, but make sure you have a follow-up to say, hey, did you read it? I'm interested. And also it's okay. You know, I've dealt with, like I said, a lot of people at Dynamics and I always try to remind people, it's okay that you say, hey, mom, I don't really, I got a lot going on in my life. I'm at the height of my career. My kids are in high school, about to go to college or they're about to graduate college, start their own lives. Like, can you help me out here? Can we have this conversation? So we, so I can feel better about doing exactly what you want. And you can also give me the gift of, just talking about it. So I know what you want and that I know what we could be doing today to be prepared for it. So I think it's okay to put it back in somebody else's court to say, mm -hmm. can you do this for me? Because I want to be here to help you. I love you. You're my world, but I'm also a human. <laughs> yeah. Who... And the exactly. sandwich generation is only getting worse because People are working longer into, you know, they're at the height of their careers in their 50s, you know, 60s, yeah. and they're also having children later. So that sandwich generation that we've been talking about for years and years is actually getting really into a, a point where it's going to be really heavy if we don't start preparing. Yeah, absolutely. And just like we mentioned to not catastrophize when yes. a parent comes to a child, a child, I mean, that I'm tongue in cheek here, but a child should not say, hey, yo, mom, do you want to be cremated or do you want right. to be buried? Let's talk right. about, you know, you don't approach it. Or how much is in your 401k? Let's talk oh, about Oh it, gosh. You know? yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. You, it's just, 
strategically having conversation. And I also coach a lot of adult children on that. They come to me mm-hmm. before they've even talked to mom and dad because yes. they're like, I'm starting to feel anxious about it. I don't know what to do, but I want to make sure I start it in the right way. And so, so. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Any parting words? No, you know, I just, I'm excited about the book. It was such a reward to finish it. And I, I really feel that this mindset is so healthy and when I can't stress enough that I truly feel this will actually keep us healthier and independent longer. And that's my ultimate goal. I don't want people, their only option is to be in a level of care and institutionalized living. And I think we can avoid it. I really do think we can avoid it. Um, We just have to do things way before we're ready to even think about them. And that's the hardest part. Yeah. And and I love that (laughs) being proactive. I love proactive, not reactive. And that's what your mission is all about. And it's obvious you are passionate about this this realm and this topic and about your mission. I mean, it's really a calling for you to do this and- It is. And, you know, after leaving senior living, when I was the executive director, you know, that was my identity for a long time. And it really was kind of a mind shift, like what is, and then to move so far away from that to the beginning of the aging journey. But it's because I just, my experience has shown me that I, it, I am very passionate about it. And I do believe that this is the new way of us going to be looking at aging. I do feel that. Yeah, absolutely. How can people connect with you? Yes. Book you to, well, they, I'm going to put all the links that you mentioned next in the show notes and I'll put a link to the book so people can go on Amazon and buy it and buy copies for all the people in their lives. Great birthday gift, Christmas gift. <laughs> yes, stocking stuffer, Christmas yes. gift, 4th of July gift, <laughs> Memorial Day or all. Yeah, because it's really important. But how can people connect with you directly? So I made it really easy. So my business is openly aging. Book is openly aging. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, openly aging. And then Allison O'Shea. So you can find me through that as well. My website is openlyaging.com. I do post a lot of information on my social media. Um, So, you know, keep liking that to be able to kind of keep up with anything going on is good. Excellent. Well, Allison, I was so excited and I'm more excited now that when we talked, I can't wait to get this up and out there so people can really uh, benefit from all the great information you have. So thank you for being a guest. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I was really happy to be here and I appreciate you asking me to be here. So Thank you. It's my Thanks. honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll hold our books up all yeah. the at the same time. See? Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. Awesome. Until next time, thank you for watching another episode of Winning Proof Unscripted.